ladies and gentlemen first of all on behalf of great afghanistan movement let me thank all my viewers and especially those viewers who don't understand pashto language but even then they have been following me and watching my videos and their personal request today i am giving them a message about the root cause of the problem between afghanistan and pakistan in english language but for it i will have to go a little bit in the history of afghanistan because without knowing the history we cannot understand what is going on there in afghanistan so far as the foreign intervention history in afghanistan is concerned i don't want to go too big in the history but i will start it from 1839 when for the first time the british empire invaded afghanistan and for the second time they invaded afghanistan in 1878 but the result in both wars was terrible it was disaster for both the british empire and afghanistan that's why when the british found that war was not the solution of the problems in afghanistan that's why they decided to use their famous formula divide and rule and thus on 12 november 1893 the british imposed the line of hatred during line upon amir abdurrahman khan the then king of afghanistan according to sir arnold fletcher he writes in his book afghanistan highway of conquest that at that time the british india had completely encircled afghanistan and when the then viceroy of british india lord landons sent a message to amir abdurrahman khan to receive a delegation to discuss this matter amir abdurrahman khan got a night and he even refused to receive that delegation but then the british india threatened amir abdurrahman khan if he would not sign the agreement he will be attacked and this the british empire imposed the brit the duran line upon amir abdurrahman khan by force however according to international law any treaty under duress has no legal status another a british writer sir fraser tetler he writes in his book afghanistan that british india imposed the duran line on afghanistan but it has a few advantages and a lot of disadvantages it has cut one main basin of in this watershed and it has split one nation the pakhtuns into separate parts and that's why this line is illogical sir william button writes in his book india's north west frontier that we the british separated the pakhtuns from their motherland afghanistan and then annexed to another nation in british india called the punjabis with whom the pakhtuns didn't have any historical geographical ethnic and traditional affinities and that was the reason according to sir william button that the british politics failed amongst the pakhtuns and another british writer sir olaf kero 
he writes in his book Dipatam that not only the Pakhtuns and the Punjabis didn't have any geographical, historical and linguistic affinities but being the Muslim they were also completely different people. But in spite of all these problems, in 1947, the British handed over the land of Afghanistan to Pakistan. However, according to the Vienna Convention, when any country gets independence from a colonial power, the demarcation of the line of the border between the two neighbors countries are agreed upon by both the countries bilaterally, not unilaterally. But in during line case, the government of Afghanistan has never recognized this line as an international border. And since 1947, Pakistan has always been playing a dirty game to destabilize, to destroy and to weaken Afghanistan to such an extent that Afghanistan will never be able to demand for their territories from Pakistan. In 1949, Pakistani aeroplanes bombed a village inside Afghanistan. In 1974, when there was uprising in Panjshir Valley in Afghanistan, the then Prime Minister of Pakistan, Zulfiqar Ali Bhutto, Pakistan Army, Pakistan Establishment, and Pakistan ISI were helping them in Panjshir. In 1975, the religious activists from Afghanistan were invited by Pakistan. Pakistan trained them in the Balahisar port and Atak port, equipped them with the latest weapons, financed them and sent them back to destabilize Afghanistan. And in 1978, when there was revolution in Afghanistan, Pakistan found the golden opportunity to interfere in the internal affairs of Afghanistan. Pakistan had two objectives at that time to interfere in the internal affairs of Afghanistan. One, to weaken Afghanistan and the second, to continue its program to make atomic bomb unchecked by the international community. And they did it. But when in 1979, the former Soviet army invaded Afghanistan and when they were defeated at that time, the other countries who had interest in the revolution of Afghanistan to defeat the Soviet army, they left Afghanistan and the mercy of Pakistan army and ISI. At that time, the Prime Minister of Pakistan was Nawaz Sharif. And they established such a government of seven religious parties in Afghanistan that the Prime Minister of Afghanistan couldn't go to the capital of Afghanistan. In the Kabul, there would be government in one street of one party and in another street of another religious party. And the civil war started in Afghanistan. These religious parties started to kill each other ruthlessly. And Pakistan had been fueling the civil war in Afghanistan. After some time, Pakistan started to organize another group to replace the seven party 
religious government in Afghanistan. And that group now is called Taliban. By the help of Pakistan Army and ISI, when in 1996 the Taliban came into power in Afghanistan, the government of Pakistan requested the Taliban government to recognize the Durin line as an international border. But the puppet government of Taliban also refused to recognize the Durand line between Afghanistan and Pakistan as an international border. But in 2001, after the incident of 11 September, when the United States of America wanted Taliban to hand over Osama bin Laden to them. At that time, the government of Pakistan offered their mediation between the Taliban and United States of America. The then Chief of Inter-Service Intelligence Organization, Organization, ISI of Pakistan, General Mahmood, along with 10 other religious People, when they went to Afghanistan to meet Mullah Umar, to convince him to hand over Osama bin Laden to America, those 10 religious scholars, when they came back to Pakistan, they said to the people that we got stunned, we surprised when we started negotiation with Mullah Umar. General Mahmood told him, don't hand over Osama bin Laden to America. You defeated a big power. That was your neighbor. But we, Pakistan, helped you and you defeated them. Now we will help you, America, because America will come from very far. And you can defeat them very easily with our help. And when General Mahmood and these 10 religious scholars came back to Pakistan. In the newspaper, there were statements that Mullah Umar denied to hand over Osama bin Laden to America. However, General Mahmood also requested him. And thus, Pakistan started a double game with their allies against terror in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, when the NATO forces and American army were entering into Afghanistan at that time, every day 5 p.m. To 11 p.m., the Pakistani aeroplanes were lifting the Taliban leaders and the leaders of Al Qaeda from Kandus Airport in Afghanistan to Pakistan. They were provided the training came there to reorganize themselves to fight against America and NATO in Afghanistan. And they also organized a Quetta Shura in Balochistan for Taliban. Dear friends, the world community, they had committed two big blunders in the past. One blunder was in 1974, when the Netherlands government and the European Union intelligence organization found that here is a Pakistani young scientist and he is stealing the uranium 
enrichment technology. But in 1975, CIA was also on the board. And when the Dutch government decided to arrest him, the CIA told them, don't touch him. We want to follow him where he goes. And thus, winning in 1975. I mean, the Khadir Khan was in Pakistan. He met with the then Prime Minister of Pakistan, with Zulfakar Ali Bhutto. Then Zulfakar Ali Bhutto announced after the meeting that we will eat grass, but we will make atomic bomb. The CIA had gambled to let the Khadir Khan go. Pakistan has been transferring the nuclear technology to the other countries like Iran, North Korea and Libya. And now Pakistan is blackmailing the world that Pakistan is a nuclear power. But the world community must also not forget that the former Soviet Union had 3 million regular army. And they had 40,000 nuclear warheads, but no power in the world could prevent former Soviet Union from disintegration. Pakistan has 500 army and from 100 to 120 nuclear warheads. That's why it will also not prevent Pakistan from disintegration. The second blunder which the world community and especially the United States of America had done in 1979 in Iran when they had been waiting for the king of Iran, Raza Shah Pehlevi, that he will handle the situation. But as a result, the fundamentalists who came into power at that time, now they are the biggest threat to the peace of the entire world. And the third blunder is around the corner, which is Pakistan. If the same scenario will take place in Pakistan as it took place in 1979 in Iran, then the world community must also know that Pakistan is a nuclear power. And if the world community will not demilitarize, denuclearize Pakistan, then for the devastating consequences, the world community will also be responsible. The atomic bomb in the hand of Pakistan is like a grenade in the hand of monkey, who can throw it anytime, anywhere. That's why the monkey must be killed, otherwise it will be too late then. Dear friends, the governor of Punjab, Salman Tasir, when he was killed by his own bodyguard, 500 liars lined up to defend him in Punjab. But the widow of Salman Tasir couldn't find a single liar to prosecute the killer. And that is the indication that the nuclear arsenals are not safe in Pakistan. Three top nuclear scientists, Sultan Bashiruddin, Mir Yusuf Beg and Choudhury Abdul Majid have been discovered to have close connections with the Taliban. And they were taken in questioning. But how many scientists, how many Pakistan army journalists, officers and ordinary soldiers, and how many officers in ISI 
are in contact secretly with Taliban. The world community must think about it. Dear friends, Bruce Rydell, the former CIA officer, he says the generals who run Pakistan tolerate terrorists at home, seek Taliban victory in Afghanistan and are building the fastest growing nuclear arsenal in Pakistan. He further says that after Osama bin Laden's death, America cannot rely on Pakistan anymore. Mike Mullen, chairman of Giant Chiefs of Staff, was briefing the Senate committee in Washington. He said that Pakistan provides critical sanctuary and support to the Afghan insurgency that we are trying to suppress. Taliban leaders under Pakistani protection even as we try to capture or kill them, they are meeting and they are organizing each other under the protection of Pakistan, I say. Stanley Wolpert, he says that in 1947, the partition of British India was a terrible mistake that has left the legacy of conflict in that region. Robert Blake, former U.S. ambassador in India, says that America and NATO have been facing a lot of problems to crush the terrorism in Afghanistan because Pakistan has been helping the Taliban and Haqqani network. He further adds that Pakistan is one of the two or three biggest international problems. Madeleine Albright, the former U.S. Secretary of State, says that Pakistan is an international migraine. Senator Dime Feinstein, he says that Pakistani radical madrasas are fueling new generation of fighters. Tariq Fateh, a Pakistani Punjabi writer, scholar, intellectual, he says that Pakistan must be disintegrated because due to this institution, a lot of Bengalis, Pashtuns, minorities were killed. And Miraj Khalid, another Pakistani scholar, he writes that a lot of people died due to Pakistan, not for Pakistan. And Stephen Cohen, he says that Pakistan is going down the road to disintegration. And if America wants to help Pakistan not to be disintegrated, even then Pakistan will be disintegrated. And another Punjabi anchor writer once he was asked on the television that what do you think about the bright future of Pakistan? He replied, Pakistan has no dark future and you are talking about the bright future of Pakistan? Dear friend, the history of Pakistan is full of the bloodshed. In 1946, when the so-called founder of Pakistan, Muhammad Ali Jannah, ordered the direct action day in Calcutta. Within a few hours, 5,000 non-Muslims were killed. In 1947, 12 million people were forcibly displaced from their homes. And from 70,000 to 100,000 women were either raped or killed. 1.2 million people were killed. 
In 1971, 3 million Bengalis in East Pakistan were slaughtered and 400,000 women were raped by Pakistan army. And since 1948 till now, 20,000 bullet riddled bodies of our Baloch brothers were sent to their homes. And now, 40,000 of our Pakhtun brothers, sisters, elders, kids, women were killed by the Pakistani F-16 bombardment, gunship helicopters, artillery and Punjabi army with their quantity there this time is 140,000 and above all since 1978 till now due to the hostile policy of Pakistan towards Afghanistan 2 million our Afghan brothers and sisters were killed. Pakistan is the most dangerous country of the world. The cross border infiltration of the militants from Pakistan to Afghanistan is the key obstacle of defeating the militancy and insurgency. Militants groups freely meet, train, and raise funds in throughout Pakistan under the cover of Intel Service Intelligence ISI. The existence of the militant sanctuary is the greatest challenge to long term security in Afghanistan, situated these sanctuaries in Pakistan. Pakistan provides main pool for recruiting insurgents who fight in Afghanistan. All the nightmares of 21st century like nuclear proliferation, dictatorship, drug smuggling and above all international terrorism come together in Pakistan. We, the Pakhtuns, the Baloch and minorities living in our own land like the refugees under the tyranny and oppression of Pakistan. The bullet riddled bodies, the missing persons and the big bodies are found only in Khaybar Pukhtunkhwa, in Balochistan, in Sin, Karachi, but not in Punjab. Why? Because the Pakistan army and Pakistan ISI and other intelligence organizations, they have been doing all these blunders. But 80% of these intelligence organizations, Pakistan army, Pakistan ISI, they belong to Punjab. That's why there is no bullet riddled body, missing person, and big body found in Punjab. Since 1947, the world community, especially United States of America, they have been helping Pakistan militarily, financially, and economically. But Pakistan has always been using that aid to crush the Pakhtuns, the Baloch, and minorities. That's why now it is the moral responsibility of the world community. Now it is the moral responsibility of the United States of America. It is the moral responsibility of the European Union and other countries to help our Pakhtuns to get rid of Pakistan and annex our motherland in Afghanistan. We, Great Afghanistan Movement, fully fully support our Baloch brothers for their struggle to get rid of the terrorist state of Pakistan. For the last five years, Afghanistan, America and NATO 
have been requesting Pakistan to bring the Taliban and Haqqani network to the negotiating table to sort out the peace strategy in Afghanistan. But Pakistan does not want to do that. Because Pakistan is preparing for another dirty game itself after 2014. And they want that they will use these forces for their proxy war against Afghanistan. But in this case, the scenario is a little bit different. With Pakistan, Iran will be side by side and they will be backed by China and Russia. That's why I want to tell to my Pakhtun brothers and all Afghan people living in the independent Afghanistan and in the occupied Afghanistan, Pakhtunkhwa, that we should be thankful. And we should cooperate and we should salute those countries who are helping the Afghanistan for their peace, for their stability and for their broad future. And these countries are United States of America, NATO, European Union, the Muslim countries, Saudi Arabia, and even India. We all should offer tributes to them. We should be too much thankful to them that they should help the Afghanistan to destroy the future plan of Pakistan, Iran, China, and Russia in that region. God bless great Afghanistan. God bless great Afghanistan moment.